Hello everybody, my name is Chris, and welcome back to more Mass Effect 2. Last episode, we got back from Haystrom because we had gone out there searching for Tally. That's right, our old crew member from the first game, Tally, who we met briefly at the beginning of this game. She was on a mission over in Geth Space. We found out kind of what that was. Uh, the, the, essentially the Admiralty Board of the fleet, um basically sent her out there right because in in that system where Haystrom is their star is actually um is actually has actually become a red dwarf and it is uh, concerning because it's too young for that it's only been a couple hundred years Tally was saying right and they don't know why and it's concerning so they wanted to go check that out, basically. And, and ultimately, the whole thing is that they were sent to go collect information. That was really the goal. And it cost a lot of Quarian lives, a lot of Tally's friends. Like, this whole thing, it was a mess. It was a, it was a, a for lack of a better term, it was a shit show. It was horrible. And so many people died because of the Geth out there. Because the planet Haystrom is completely overrun by Geth. In fact, they it used to be a Quarian colony, but it was taken over by the Geth. And then the fact that they sent the, them back in there to retrieve whatever this information is, claiming that it was worth the risk, it was worth the sacrifices, whatever it is, right um whatever they would learn would be worth killing all these people over so not not the best impression of the you know admiralty board right but what we did get was we got tolly on our team again we got her back and so she's now part of our crew she's here for us she hates cerberus which is fair you know but happily, she's on our team. She's on our team now. And we even saved her friend, um, Cal Rieger, who was, re was a really goddamn cool dude. And we were, we were able to actually save his life and fight down a Colossus in person. The big things that in the last game, in the first Mass Effect, we were taking out in the, uh, in the makeup, right? We were taking them out really not terribly difficult but on foot absolutely a battle so we had to fight one of those it's pretty neat but we won we won tactical combat success so we've now left Haystrom with Tally she's on board she's been given access thanks to Jacob to the ship systems so she is going that wherever she's placed herself i imagine probably by the core um and she's you know she's fitting in <laughs> we took jack on the mission though we took jack with us and she was fucking powerful she was really cool she was really, now is it more effective than a shotgun i don't know but her shockwave ability is sick it's really good <laughs> so um Maybe we use her more? Maybe not? We'll figure out. It depends. I think it depends on the, on the on who we're actually fighting, right? And knowing who we're fighting before we pick our squad. But right now, suspicions are high. It's already been, like, distrusting, but suspicions are high to me for Cerberus. I hella sus actively sus <laughs> it's great to see tally on board commander just like old times like, it is her right i mean because with the mask it's i ah, never mind wow <laughs> stupid uh it is her it is her and i'm glad that she she happily came on board it wasn't like reluctant or like i guess or like you know maybe or you know I'll join up with you, but only under these circumstances. She's like, no, I'm here for you. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. 
I assume everything is going well up here? Good for now. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. All right. <laughs> That's it for now. See wait, you, Commander. Wait, no, I didn't. I gotta ask you about the crew. <laughs> Commander, what do you think about the people? We're well, picking? about the ones you went out with last. Well, it seems like Garrus is. I'm not saying anything about Jack. I'm not stupid. It's just my <laughs> opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading around. That's fucking funny. That's it for now. See you, Commander. I was hope. I was like, what are your what are your thoughts on Jack? He's like, I ain't say shit about her. I ain't stupid. <laughs> Gotta fucking. Uh, that's great. I love that. Amazing. Now, does anyone else have anything to say, though? Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Not a good time. Trying to map contamination vectors requires focus. Shipwide infection of human tailored virus possible if I slip. Anything else? That's concerning. <laughs> uh,. Status? Are there any medical concerns I should be aware of on the team? Cerberus personnel in excellent condition. No squad concerns to report. Always some matters, but nothing affecting immediate mission. Excellent. I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need me. Great. Good to know. All right, man. What up? I hope we can clear up what's going on with the Gernsback, Commander. Doubt my father's alive after all this time. Was there anything else? Just eager to get going. Uh, I know, and we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that for him. We're gonna do that for all of us, including him. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Already? I'm not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's do this later. Uh, opinion of the crew. What do you think of the state of the crew? Yeah, unless all distractions are removed, loyalty to the mission will suffer. Run this team through hell, and all we're getting is burned. Anything else, Commander? Nope. We'll talk later. Commander. All right, sounds good. Ooh. So these... I like that that one ended up on there. That's interesting, though. So we got a couple of them. We got a couple heavy weapons. Uh... Let's... We're here. Should we... Let's work. Let's just work our way down slowly, one floor at a time, as we do, as we have. <laughs> How's it going? Great. I check on you guys, even though I know you might not say anything, because I care. That's the kind of captain I am, you know. That is the commander that I've always been. Starboard observation deck is closed until needed. My bad. <laughs> hey, Shepard. Hello. Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. Emphasis on the evil. The food's gotten better lately, though. I guess his reputation will take time to heal. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do with myself. Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people go in and out of Dr. Chakwa's office. Other than to get medical attention, I mean. I hear you shared a drink with her. That's really nice. I imagine with all that's happened, old friends are becoming a luxury. Okay. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Okay, so kind of same stuff. Same stuff. Nothing, nothing dramatically new. But that's fine. Doesn't have to be. Weren't you originally stationed on Horizon? Yes. If I hadn't joined Cerberus, I'd be abducted by the Collectors right now. Wow, you really dodged a bullet. Yeah, I couldn't take that. They creep the hell out of me. <sighs> yeah, a little unsettling. Still don't know their goal, though. It's just weird, because they're not killing anybody. Or, like, they probably are, but, like, they're trying to abduct. Which is the weirdest part. Right? Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Ah, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> Talk to you later, Garrus. I'll be here if you need me. All right. Just checking. So I'm thinking... So maybe not everybody has something to say. Because in the first... In, in Mass Effect 1, it was after every main mission, right? Every main mission we did, everyone kind of had comments on it. Right. And this one, 
it's kind of also the same but i think it applies to like mission missions and not like the dossier missions even though those are main although those are main missions these aren't exactly always ones that garner responses right i think i think if we have time, I'd like to go to Ilium and relocate my sister's family. Why are you looking for her? We already had this conversation. Can you tell me more about relocating your sister? My father is after my sister. I've kept her hidden for years, but his agent... You remember what I... There was another reason I went to... She's living a normal life on Ilium, safe and hidden from my father. Damn it, I triggered it again. <laughs> okay, hold on. So you think your father's... I've tried to keep her hidden with... He's too close. What do you need me to my, do? My contact's name is Lent. Okay. All right. I was like, oh god, I started started the whole thing again. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Oh. Okay. So we are we are gonna have to do all the loyalty missions. So we're gonna do all the missions. There's we're we're ending this game with a clean slate of missions, like nothing undone. It's more about figuring out the order that I want to do them. And I know uh, for whatever for whatever reason and I'm fine not knowing is mostly uh, like Lair of the Shadow Broker if we do that it, it affects some things or it stops us being able to do some things and then um, Arrival and Overlord these are definitely also for later like way way later so I'm fine holding off on those because I don't want to um this, this isn't one of those that's just like oh you know like you're ruining the playthrough because I'm blind I'm like no if these if this if it genuinely is a a better overall way or it's designed in a specific way that it this is better for later then cool I'm, I'm all for it great <laughs> We're doing it either way. So it's not like I'm itching to do it now and if I have to wait. You know, something like that. It's not that big a deal. But um Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things to do. Yo. Thinking about past missions. Got a minute. You might learn something. Always. One time, we were trying to clear out this gun nest outside a base on Vatar. Nothing we did even made a dent in that thing. Someone had the bright idea to kidnap a local girl, strap grenades on her, and make her go seduce the guy in the bunker. Terrible thing, I tell you. Well, she went up there, knocked on the door, and nothing. Grenades never went off. But the guy stopped shooting, and we snuck by. Never found out what happened. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. That's terrifying. But you smoke, Shepard? Don't. That stuff will kill you. You're a kid once. Weapons dealer. Probably half your age. Bastard smoked too close to a cache of explosives. Tossed a butt, blew himself sky high. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Like, you know, he's like, oh, that stuff will kill you. Probably not because of the smoking, but because, you know, if you get into a habit... You, you might explode yourself. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. God damn it. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go that way in a moment. Yo. Shepard? Just checking in, making sure you're acclimatizing. <laughs> I was just... <laughs> just sitting here thinking. The picture. I'm finally starting to get it. There's a tank imprint, the Battle at Canrum. A dead Turian, stripped. You don't see them out of their armor much. A Krogan boot on his head, and a claw hammer. It's under the brow plate, pulling it back, right? Eyes have gone black, and you see tension in the muscle. You can feel it ready to snap. I get it. Get it? Why is that funny? <laughs> Canrum isn't ringing a bell. Death of Shiagar, female warlord. 
Turians killed her so they were hunted down and made examples. Even if they won the war, it was the last push before the rebellions ended. Shit. This brutality has a point? Why is it funny? <laughs> Maybe I had to be there, but I don't get the joke. There's no joke. It's just great. It's a Turian and he's being torn apart for what they did. I felt nothing Comedy. before, <laughs> but now I get it. It was a good fight. The enemy was destroyed to punish them all and send a message. I get it. I hate Turians. <laughs> I thought you'd be glad. <laughs> no, I understand now. I hate Turians. It makes... Uh, I, I get it now. Thank God. The pictures, the visions, it all makes sense. I, I thought you'd be that. I don't like hearing this. Not quite. But I'm not Krogan. What about Garrus? Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't start anything with Garrus. I won't have trouble on my ship. I don't hate Garrus. I hate the Turians. Garrus is just one Turian, and he's your clan. No point in ripping his face off unless he turns on me. It's hate, but it's mine. Okir was blind, and he tried to make me the same. But I'm starting to feel what they did. To see why I should care. Anyway, I'm still figuring where I fit, but it made me laugh. Nothing else really on my mind, Shepard. Damn. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stand up for Garrus too, just like I would stand up for, for Grunt, right? If it was the other way around, but um, I can, I can respect that. Right? He's like, he's like, hey, he's a Turian, okay? He's not, he's not all of them. He's a Turian, and he's part of our clan, so he's gonna, he's like, I don't need to worry about that. Shepard, mission to collect as a squad. What do you think about the crew? Good bunch if they stay out of my way. Dead bunch if they don't. Train them good if you want to take on collectors. Some of these aliens are too smooth. Anything in your tank imprints that can make use of the resources we found? Hmm. Might have something I could put together. Don't know how useful it will be. I don't know. Do we have the stuff to do the upgrade yet? No, we need a ton of platinum. That's yeah. That's what. That's what it was. So I should keep this crap around. Don't let it pile up. I live down here. That's all for now, Shepard. Excellent. Okay. So note more platinum. So Kenneth, did you know we've got a crazy woman squatting down in the sub deck? What? If she touches anything, I'll kill her. Oh, and the only thing she wears from her waist up is tattoos. Oh, maybe I should go down and welcome <laughs> her aboard. And she's a murderer, has biotic powers that could crush you with a blink. Hates everyone in Cerberus. Damn it, girl. Stop toying with me. <laughs> Damn it, the, the back and forth. That was really funny. I love that. I love the, the interactions between these two are just fucking great. Oh, she's not here. Not gonna lie, this is where I expected... Where I expected Tally to be. Oh, you're... <laughs> she's right here. All right. Shepard, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? We didn't really have time to chat while taking out Gath on Hastrum, did we? I can't believe so many people died. Thank you again for getting Rieger out alive. Hey. All for data about stars blowing up. I hope the Admiralty Board gets some use out of it. They fucking better, y'all. There's a lot of people that died for for that. Have you heard any word about Cal Rieger? Did he survive his injuries? He sent me a message. It looks like he'll make a full recovery. Yeah. Any time you get a suit puncture, it's a matter of luck. Rieger got out with a relatively minor infection. I know the way he's like, I'm swimming in antibiotics. <laughs> this Admiralty Board response to Tell me about the fleet's Admiralty Board. It's one of two major political powers among my people. The Admirals make decisions related to defense or needing immediate action. 
They also handle major criminal charges, like treason. The other political power is the Conclave, a group of representatives from each ship. They make most of our laws and fleet decisions. Okay. Got it. So there's the Admiralty War and the Conclave. The Conclave is made up of... It's like a... It's almost like a Senate, in a way, right? It's like just a bunch of... Like, you have one ship, you have your one representative, kind of like Udina is for humanity. Or was, right? But now we have... Um, like in Mass Effect 1, yeah. How he was basically the the representative for humanity to the council. Right? Any news yet on the data you sent? I'm not likely to hear anything for a while. Or on an unsecured channel, for that matter. Damn. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Having any trouble settling back in on the Normandy? I like the quiet. I miss the old faces, though. Yeah. Presley, Engineer Adams, all of them. It doesn't seem right having Cerberus in charge of this ship. Are you sure working for them is the right thing to do? <sighs> you bring up great things. One, yes, I miss the old faces too. It's really sad, right? And then, yeah, the fact that Cerberus is like in charge of the Normandy feels really gross. <laughs> right? It's not about the fact that they made it. It's, it's like the Normandy, the reputation, the look, and everything. And it's basically just being run by another corporation instead of us. Why do you hate Cerberus? I'm the one in charge. I don't trust them. I don't have a choice. They're on our side. That I don't fucking believe. I've never really believed. But now I'm even questioning, like, it's like, oh, they're all for humanity. When it's like, yes, but at what cost? I caught some tension back on Freedom's Progress, and again when you first came aboard. What happened between Cerberus and the Quarians? They attacked one of our ships, the Edena. It seems they were attempting to kill or control a young human biotic who was on the fleet. I don't really know the details. I do what? know that Cerberus made an enemy of the Quarian people. That doesn't sound very pro-humanity, huh? So they attacked a ship in order to just, in order to kill a young human biotic. What? That's weird, that's so specific. They went out of their way to attack the Quarians just for this human biotic. Huh. That's fucking weird. I don't trust them. I fully expect them to betray us at some point. And we'll be ready. I'm glad to hear that, Shepard. Just let me know how I can help. For now, I should get back to work. Thanks for coming by. That's nice. That was a nice little conversation. Also, fucking Tim, I hope you fucking heard that, you piece of shit. I can say it to your face. <laughs> I totally expect you to betray me. So don't be surprised. Don't be fucking surprised when I'm ready for it. I see it coming. <laughs> just dangling my old friends in front of me you know I'm gonna go for it which is the worst part but I got thoughts like little bugs crawling in and out of my head I can't stop them I feel that you know I have a history with Cerberus you know how far back it goes I'm listening I'll listen to anything you have to say Jack your pal, the elusive man? Never seen him before, but Cerberus raised me. First thing I remember is my cell door in a Cerberus base. They did experiments, drugged me, tortured me. Whatever chance I had to be normal, they stole it by trying to turn me into some superbiotic. The doctors, the other kids, every one of them hated me. They let me suffer. Sure it was Cerberus? I believe it was Cerberus, that's not even a question. But also, like... The way she, she's like, I've never seen the elusive man before. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of in his name, right? So, like, I imagine even if you're dealing with Cerberus or captured by them, like, he's not going to be walking around. Right? But it is a little weird, right? 
What did they hope to gain by torturing a little girl? It was something about pain breaking down mental barriers and how it might clear the way for a more biotic power. I'm sure there was a payoff due at some point, but I wasn't going to see it. I was wired up in a cell. Jesus. Fuck. That's so bad. You enjoy what you became? Experiments for no reason? They tortured you just to see if they could make a strong biotic? That's it? Wasn't in a position to ask, Shepard. All I know is a little girl crying in a cell, begging for the pain to stop. So fucking sad. Right? Like, that wasn't cut. That. I wasn't thinking that was very confrontational. It was more just like. A, just an inquiry. Not like expecting a real answer, right? You love the power they gave you. They never gave me a choice. That's true. Uh, justification for torture. Escape. Other kids. Um. She gonna say anything? What did they hope to gain by torturing? It was something a about pain. I'm okay. sure there was a payoff due at some point. Okay, I didn't know I if it was gonna, gonna go into it. another thing. I was wired up in a cell. How did you get out of there? There was some kind of emergency, and I made a break for it. The other kids came out of their cells and attacked me. So did the guards. I just killed fuck? everything in my way and ran. Guess my biotics had developed faster than they thought. I managed to get a shuttle off the ground, drifted until a freighter picked me up. The crew used me, then sold me. That's my uplifting escape story. Fuck. She literally broke out, killed everyone in her way to escape, got a shuttle. Freighter got picked up. Used, sold. And that's it's like fuck. It's so sad. Oh Jack. There were other children in the base? I didn't know much about them. I was kept separate. They hated me just like everyone else there. When I broke out, I had to fight through them all. I showed them. But there's a loose end I need to deal with. Ooh. I'm interested. <laughs> so what's so you telling me? So, so Cerberus has that's not even that surprising right that Cerberus has like a whole base out there that's just full of people especially a bunch of kids and they just like torture them and twist them and fuck everything up to just try to make them I mean maybe they make them all biotics is that the plan or is it like for different reasons and she just happened to be one they went for biotically you're absolutely certain that Cerberus was running the facility. I was a kid, but I wasn't dumb. I know how to listen. It was Cerberus. Don't care how far down the chain it was. They thought they were so clever. Turns out, mess with someone's head enough and you can turn a scared kid into an all-powerful bitch. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Fucking idiots. Cerberus is different now. We're, we're, we're not defending Cerberus. Like, hell no. I'll confront them. I'm going to talk to the elusive man, and he'd better have some answers. He'll just deny everything. That's not what I'm after anyway. I found the coordinates in your files. I want to go to the Telton facility on Pragia where they tortured and drugged me. I want to go to the center of the place, my cell. I want to deploy a big fucking bomb, and I want to watch from orbit when it goes. I like that. Let's do that. That's cool. Destroying a server's base? That's a big fucking deal, though. Like, that's... That sounds like... Like, kind of like borderline, like a declaration of war against Cerberus. Attacking our allies is going to derail our mission. Not a smart move. The files say it was shut down after my escape. It's been abandoned for years. They going to care if I blow up a garbage dump? Okay, fair enough. I mean, I was on board to do it anyway, but if it's shut down, then it's just for your peace of mind, and that means a lot to me. You've lived with this your whole life. Why do this now? Like I said, I found the coordinates in your files. You can't expect me to just sit on information like that. And I wouldn't expect you to. Let's go. I'll set a course for Pragya. I owe you, Shepard. Hey. Part of the ship, part of the crew. Look out for each other here. Means we got a lot of 
another one on the list of favors for everyone. <laughs> Not bad, though. Not bad. I think it'll be very... I think it'll be a very fun and interesting... Uh, they'll all be really interesting, actually. Because they're all so very different. Right? It's not just go here, find this, go here, kill that. It's like there's they're they're all so very different. I find that'd be very interesting. Now is there anything else? I think we gained anything else. So we did. We talked to her, so we got that. Um I'm gonna hold off on the Shadow Broker for now, for a little bit. At least. Kind of want to get these guys. And then eventually just make kind of like a full round of doing like Jacob and Miranda and then Jack. Their missions. And then probably these N7 missions. Right? Because... Yeah, I thought one of these was, um... We got that cash from Arya. And she was like, oh, hey, here's some coordinates. Uh, whatever's over there, that's up for you to deal with. Um, I don't know if it's money. But I don't know why she didn't say money. Like credits or whatever. Treasure. Items. She didn't say anything. She said whatever's there is up, is for you to deal with. Which is very suspicious. But, uh, yeah, I thought she... I thought, we, I thought we had it. Maybe it doesn't show up on here. Maybe it's just on the galaxy map. Maybe we just gotta find it. I don't know. But anyway, so I was looking for that. But I think... Samara. Let's go find Samara. This sounds interesting. Right? Travel to, to Ilium. It's Ilium is where we're gonna start basically all this shit. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot that's gonna really pop off. I just gotta worry about not coming across Liara by accident. These are all on Ilium. Well, I guess we go to Ilium and then we just be real careful not to confront Liara. Yet. Yet. I want to. I want to. But I want to get all this other stuff first before we do this. Because this seems like a big deal. This is a big deal. Right? So, Ilium in the Tassel. Tassel. Ilium in I am in the Tassale. Tassale. <laughs> yeah, that sun's looking bad. Okay. Oh, let's bounce. Cool. God, look at the list on the Crescent Nebula. Okay, I'm assuming it's this one. Yeah. Do I... Okay, do I want to go... I kind of want to go get fish. I kind of feel like getting fish is the right thing to do. I know that seems like such a weird, such a weird side thing, <laughs> but just it feels it feels empty. They were part of the crew, part of the ship. Just buy these. Cool. We have one hundred eighty-six thousand credits. Holy shit! I guess like we're here, right? There was some other stuff we could have purchased, but we didn't have enough money at the time because I spent it all. So maybe we look at some shopping for like a second. Aside from buying fish. Fish, important. Important. Right? But just as important, things we can buy. 
whether they were upgrades or they were full on uh, other useful things. We gotta check out the shops. Okay. Okay, cool, we're here. You know what? Just like old times. Bring the, the OG squad. <laughs> okay. Saving that. I know I could upgrade the AI hacking. The rank one hacking was actually like... I wish it lasted a little longer, but it was cool. It just needs to, you know... They... they gotta get the shield off of them first. Right? Alright. Now, command your very own battle drone. She has a battle drone? That's so cool. Sharpens Tally's combat skills and weapon damage. Lengthens her power duration. Quarry and machinist. She also has AI hacking and energy drain. Drains enemy kinetic power. Kinetic barrier power to boost your own shields. That's cool. Okay. Spawns a tech drone to draw enemy fire. The drone can electrically stun targets and briefly briefly and damage their shields. But only one drone can be active at a time. That's fascinating. So it's like a distraction too. Okay, so right now it lasts for 18 seconds. This still lasts for 18 seconds, but it gets a health bonus. Hmm. I'll give her just one rank just to see what that's like. Just to see like if if her doing it on her own, or if I can command it. Cause I don't think we can both do it at the same time. It has to be like one one of us at a time. So that about doubles it. What do we got here? Evolve Quarry Machinist into one of the following. Quarry Engineer, Quarry Mechanic. So, uh, increases her tech skills, further increasing the duration of her powers, or increasing her weapon damage. Okay. Weapon damage, good, but... Increases the duration of her powers. Right? Hmm. Do that just to give her the increase. Combat drone. I do kind of want. I just kind of want to boost this to the max because the me the best combat drone. Ability evolution. Attack drone or explosive drone. You have upgraded the combat drone, so its electric shock damages target health, armor, and biotic barriers. So it hits all of it. It does damage. It does damage to... So do, does that mean it does damage to each or all three at the same time? Or it's just really good at all three? Then explosive drone. Your combat drone is rigged to explode when destroyed, pulsing energy that inflicts high damage to all nearby enemies. <sighs> oh, shit. So this electric shock doesn't just stun them, it actually damages, right? This explodes. <laughs> oh, shit. It takes 30 seconds to recharge. So the recharge is the same no matter which one, but if this explodes... Like, I feel like that'd be really good against stronger enemies. But if it's like a group of smaller smaller enemies this is definitely a lot more useful because it can go around just zapping everything <sighs> I like the idea of the explosion but I feel like this is just tactically way more fish effective I boost that Garrus my man evolve you Turian renegade a Turian survivor so 
weapon and power damage increase or health increase. So this gives 25% weapon damage and 15%. So I get 5% more health in exchange for 7 less weapon damage. 7% less. I feel like Renegade fits a lot more for what we do. Right? And... I kind of want to bump up the Disruptor, but also I kind of... I'm going to do that. I've decided. I decided it just now. Figured it out. <laughs> Sorry. I was on that screen for a while. But... Okay. We're back. Nope, no new interactions. That's fine. Oh, I... I guess right here we should... We can listen to the news. That'll be fun. Alliance military officials are having difficulty meeting hiring quotas, according to a new report. Since Eden Prime, an initial surge in patriotic enlistments was followed by a downturn, as the public became skeptical that the Alliance can match Geth technology. Fears of an uncontrolled plague in the streets of Omega have been laid to rest, as the disease is now under control. The colony of Mindwar has won the right to use Commander Shepard's likeness on its colonial seal. The commander's family was killed in a slaver attack, but Shepard has maintained ties to the colony. The Systems Alliance Parliamentary Subcommittee for Transhuman Studies has awarded reparations for biotics suffering complications from L2 implants. Subcommittee Chairman Burns thanked biotics everywhere for their patience and understanding, and promised more help for those forgotten by the system until now. Yep. That was I'm a good sorry, mission in the first game. The with that. But this is a ceremonial item. Hold on, we don't do ceremonial items here on the on the Citadel anymore. Oh, you gotta throw that away, man. Okay. I hear this is the best place for food on Zakara Ward. You heard wrong. This is the best place for food on the whole damn Citadel. <laughs> nope, nothing fine, here. Fine, I just need to pick up some spices. Amino next. Okay. <laughs> Oh, news report. Welcome to Citadel Newsnet. I'm Emily Wong. CSEC has reported the disappearance of a sanitation worker on Kithoi Ward. Denaria Claris failed to return from her shift during the third watch. Her assignment took her near the keeper's area of the ward, and it is feared her corpse might have been taken to the protein vats for recycling. Shit. Welcome to Citadel Newsnet. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Emily Wong. The top story in international affairs is a Batarian test of a new orbital mirror system. By placing large arrays of mirrors at a planet's Lagrange points, it is possible to focus sunlight at any point on its surface. The Batarian hegemony insists that the system is for peaceful purposes, to control weather and terraform worlds too cold for settlement. However, Turian monitors contend that the system could be used to focus sunlight into a thermal weapon. These are both plot. These these. Are both things that could easily be true and could happen. Welcome to Citadel Newsnet. I'm Emily Wong. A Solarian survey ship, the Callan High, has been officially declared overdue after three weeks without contact. At this time, it is unclear whether the Callan High was attacked or suffered an accident. Turian and Alliance frigates are coordinating a search. Welcome to Citadel Newsnet. Damn. I'm Emily Wong. The Systems Alliance 5th Fleet has begun its planned tour of the Attican Traverse region. The fleet, centered around the dreadnought Orizaba under Admiral Stephen Hackett, will stop in various systems over the next three months. Critics in the Asari Republics accuse the Alliance of gunboat diplomacy. A spokesperson noted, the Treaty of Ferrixen defines dreadnoughts as weapons of mass destruction. Their inclusion in a frontier cruise is provocative. <laughs> I guess toting a weapon of war around, right? Yeah, it doesn't probably give that that impression they think it does. Welcome to Citadel News. Or it's what they want. I'm Emily Wong. Horizon has become the latest and largest. 
largest human settled world to disappear in the wave of lost colonies. Councillor Anderson, in a joint statement with the Volus and Elcor, announced that the Council fleet will be utilized in an investigation. The Councillor <coughs> categorically denied the assignment of a Spectre to investigate the situation. Wow. They denied sending a Spectre to investigate because normally, I feel like they would have. They would have normally done that, right? But now, though, they're going to send their own. They're going to send a whole other thing. I'm Commander Shepard. Suspicious. And this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Suspicious. Wait, what? <gasps> no way. A small ship model of the Geth flagship destroyed at the battle of the city. The Geth flagship. Damn, they're going deep in this propaganda. They're lying. Even on the box. Okay. Well. Get my fish again. Should dare ask why I got him again. Bring it up. Okay. Okay, so. We got fish again. And I will feed them. I will feed them, and I will take care of them, and I will treat them the best. Best that I could treat them. But we got a Sovereign model, though. That is really cool. That is really rad. <laughs> I think that is... That's gonna look neat in our room. You ever had ramen? It's a delicacy back on Earth. Always has been. Okay. Shipping warehouse, that's a whole thing. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Ooh. Oh, it's just credits. I do have money. Let's go. Just, he's my baby. He's all How I many do we have now? To... Oh. Currently have four, but our total capacity is higher than that. I know. I'm Commander Shepard. And this is my favorite store on the Citadel. I love the idea that you could literally walk as just a normal civilian to each store. It still cracks me up. It's just every store is it's my favorite store on the Citadel. Ah, my favorite customer. What can I get you? I'd like to buy something. Oh, it's all automated these days. There's... Thanks for your time. I'll be here if you need anything. Cool. Here we go. Here we go. 20% to shields, barriers, and armor. We can afford this now. And tech damage. Tech power damage. Yes. Buy that. The Archon Visor. No, it's going to cost us like, like half our credits. We don't need it. I'm not going to use it. I like the current one we have. I don't know if we should switch out our armor though. Because this is really working for us. As far as like the bonuses and everything. So. I'm kind of... I'm kind of cool keeping it currently. We haven't really found anything better. At least for... At least for Infiltrator. I don't know what that... I don't know if that cool... Like that dragon armor would be really cool. It looks awesome, right? But... I don't know if that would be... If that would be something that we should... Wear, like... I don't remember the bonus on it. Or if it did have one. I have to... I, I'm pretty sure it did. I just remember we looked at it like once, so... I have to go look at my fish. Make sure they're okay. My fish. Well, actually, let's see if we can research these now that I bought them. Do we have the stuff? Ooh, yes. Uh... Bam. That's what we want to see. Don't think... Do I want to buy the tech duration? Yeah. Yeah, we'll invest in both. We have the stuff. And we gotta get more anyway. But, to our room. What up, boo? There he is. 
I, I, I don't care if it's the same thing all the time. It's adorable. That is massive. That is fucking cool. <laughs> oh, we're getting so many ship models. And the fact that we could buy another one means they get they they come in stock. So there's what, potentially one, two, th th four more ships we could get? Four more things? Dude, it's that is massive, that model. Look, I promise I will take care of you guys far better than... You're my first fish. I've never had other fish. As far as I am aware. Okay. This thing looks so fucking cool. <laughs> right? Um, what was the bonus? Power damage by 15, shield strength by 10. That's what it is. Should we mix up our casual appearance? This is just wild to me. No, I think we're good. Anything on anything new over here? No. Okay. Well, time to press forward. Oh, because we have to go at Ilium. No messages for you, Commander. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> All right. Yep, over to the Crescent Nebula. <laughs> it's Ilium. It's where all the action is happening, apparently, for the next little while. We got a lot of... Yeah, look at that. Oh, Miranda. Liara's over here, too. Right? Liara's here, Miranda's sister's here, and our two next recruits are here. It's gonna be something else. Okay. Let's... My full on my full on probes? Yep, fully probed. Alright. Let's go. I'm going to probably farm these after we come out of Ilium. Um, but anyway, Thale is a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. Its complex systems of rings is unstable, dating back only a few million years. They're thought to be the shattered remains of a comet. Any cool lot of palladium? Not, not a whole, oh, crazy lot going on for this guy. But I will gather those resources. Postly. Because we do need them for a lot of the other upgrades. So. I will not be going without them. Do not worry. Naxel. Naxel is an ammonia methane ice giant. Several smaller energy corporations shut out of the big market in the Fire Gateway system are attempting to develop a local helium 3 fuel mining infrastructure to service Ilium. The leading investor is the human corporation Eldfell Ashland Energy. Their efforts have been hampered by the extra legal pressure the H3 cartels in the Fi system can bring to bear. From simple price cuts to bureaucratic obstructions, which is denied permits and constant health and safety inspections. They're just basically completely getting in the way. Fascinating. Well, you're messing with business. Don't mess with people. Their businesses, fucking it up. Ponolus, Ponolus, Ponolus. <laughs> A fairly typical Venusian hothouse. Ponolus <laughs> seems almost tame compared to the violent volcanic outburst of the inner world, Berengale. In contrast, Ponolus is nearly inert, with no active volcanoes or plate tectonics. 
The most dramatic event in the last million years was the founding of the Asari Air State Research Platform. Alvi was sick. Alvi, Alvi, Alvi sick. <laughs> in 2092, which fell after being holed by an improbably unlucky meteor. Most of the crew successfully reached escape capsules, but six were lost. The crushed wreck of the platform now lies in the Creusite Plain in the Southern Hemisphere. Damn, that's fucking rough. Shit. Oh, platinum. I'll take the platinum. <laughs> okay, we'll come back for these. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of, a lot of mining. This is cool. That looks cool. Berengale. Well, not a classical hothouse world like Venus. Baron Berengale. Barangay Barangali <laughs> is scarcely more hospitable. In addition to being the closest to the star to sail to Sale, its m its core contains many radioactives and other heavy elements. These increase the heat of the planets and drive volcanism. Barangale's crust is too rigid for plate tectonics to function, and the planet will go through cycles in which the pressure builds to a massive superior volcanic eruption. These spew ejecta over thousands of kilometers. Gross. Leave Caldera a hundred kilometers away and spew enough molten material to repave entire continents. God damn. The last such event was 812,000 years ago. Current rate of outgassing from volcanic hotspots suggests another will occur within the next 10 millennia. Watch out. Mark your calendars. It's a bad day. It will be. Boom. Probe. I know I'm over here, just drop like one probe and leave. I'd hate to probe and go. You know. Feels rude. Launching probe. Just really just trying to take all the all the platinum. Probe away. Okay. Well I will collect the resources post haste. But in the meantime. We've, we've dilly-dallied going around all everywhere else long enough. We land on Ilium. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Ilium is a classic garden world developed to, to serve as entropo between the Terminus systems and the Asari Republics. To abet this trade, the normally stringent custom laws of council space on product safety, prescribed materials, and sapient trafficking are relaxed. Are they relaxed? Are they? Are they? Great. So the laws are stringent in council space, but out here, eh, it's a little more chill. Officially, Ilium is not in a sorry world. It is colonized and operated by Asari corporate interests. Great. This gives it the same legal latitude enjoyed by the human corporation corporate research enclaves of Novaria. Oh, good. Great. Enjoyed by the corporate research enclaves of Novaria. Great. So basically, just do whatever the fuck you want, as long as you don't want to say shit. Ilium is one of the youngest Asari colonies settled during the seventh expansion wave. The first child born on the world is only now reaching her middle age. That's a long time. Hmm. The world is hot and massive. Ground settlement is only possible at the higher polar latitudes. In more equatorial locations, 
the population is housed in arcology skyscrapers to escape the heat of the surface. I was gonna say, like... So it's a world that essentially connects the terminus systems and the Asari republics, right? So it's ba a very Asari world, which makes sense. One of the people we're going to recruit is an Asari, and then Liara is also apparently here. Um, and we've never been to a world like this, so it's like... The fa and the fact that it's like kind of... Not like law-wise, but the fact that there's any sort of comparison to Neveria is like, oh boy. Great. Let's see. 84... Um, 85 million people. God damn. Nosastra is the capital. Uh, one and a half Earth year orbit. 25 hour days. Not bad. Pretty, pretty normal. Pretty casual. You know, a little bit more atmosphere. A little gravity. Seems like a nice time. Except for the crime. So, <laughs> um... Who do we bring? So I know we're going to go recruit first. I feel like bringing her for her sister is a good idea, right? Um, we're going to go scoop up our next, our next crew member. Our next dossier. That's crazy. This is this gonna be like the nicest planet we've been to? Well, hold on. I don't want to say that, you know, like nice, but you know, it's the least ruined planet we've been to. Welcome to Nosastra, Commander Shepard. We've been instructed to waive all docking and administration fees for your visit. My name is Karina. If you need information about the area, it would be my pleasure to assist you. Hi, Karina. Well, that's nice. So they've already waived the fees. Well, look at that. Already. Why do I get the free pass? Uh -huh. I was concerned for a moment. Who instructed you to waive the fees? The order came from Liara Tassoni, who paid all fees on your behalf. She also asked that I direct you to speak with her at your convenience. She's near the trading floor. She knows we're here. She knows we were on our way. Interesting. I didn't know she was given such a heads up. Hmm. I know we were told to go find her, but I didn't know, like... I mean, I guess, what, Cerberus probably was like, Hey, we're gonna go send Shepard to go talk to you. Maybe, I don't know. What can you tell me about Nos Astra? It's an exciting city. We see a lot of new cultures and goods because of our proximity to the Terminus systems. At the same time, Ilium is still in a sorry world. You should be as safe here as you would be on the Citadel. For your own safety, however, I recommend against signing anything. Cool. <laughs> For your own safety. Don't sign anything. I can't sign anything. What's so dangerous about signing something? Ilium is a free trade world commander. Contract term requirements are more relaxed here than on other planets. It's a small price to pay for keeping our competitive edge in goods from the Terminus systems. Yeah, which means you very easily get into some f fucky contracts. You mentioned trading. What gets traded on Ilium? Anything you can imagine, Commander. Ilium is a wonderful world for those who can afford it. In order to remain competitive as a Terminus Systems port, we've relaxed many of the standards you'd find on other Asari worlds. Most drugs are legal, provided they are labeled properly. You can buy almost any weapon or technology. You can even buy indentured servants. <gasps> what can't you do here? <laughs> God damn it. Holy shit. The way she even said... I don't know if that's the selling point. Maybe it is. It's not the one they think it is, but holy sh- Look, hey, look, as long as you label that drug, you do whatever you want, man. 
right? You can buy almost any weapon or technology. We don't give a fuck. Whatever, man. You can even buy people. <laughs> like, it's, it's all good. Fucking God. This is gonna be interesting. Slavery. That's disgusting. I can't believe an Asari world would allow slavery. We try to avoid calling it slavery. All indentured servants on Ilium have voluntarily agreed to a term of service. Most choose indentured service as a means to pay off debt or avoid imprisonment. A contract holder is responsible for the well-being of her servants, and a servant's duties are agreed upon before the contract is signed. See, that's just slavery with extra steps. <laughs> it's just like, look, hey, hold on. I just, this fucking cracks me up. Holy shit. Like, look, hold on. We, we, we don't really want to call it slavery. All right? Calm down. Okay? We don't call it that. It's indentured servitude. All right? Come on. They they wanted this. They chose it, actually. They signed away. Sometimes they go to prison, but they can get out of it by doing this. It's good for them. Good for everybody. Sometimes they, you know, they got to pay off some debt. So they're like, hey, you know. It's it's really just like a side job. It's really like a gig, in a way. So, it's actually good for them, when you really think about it. In fact, it's almost better that we have it. Because it's an opportunity. You know? It's an opportunity for those people. <laughs> you said Liara was here? What's she doing? Liara is one of Nosastra's most respected information brokers. Nosastra is based upon trade. Information is valuable currency, and Liara has done quite well. As I said, you'll find her near the trading floor. She was looking forward to seeing you. Oh. Damn. Ah, she's always incredible. So I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all that she's... She's as good as she is. The attractions... Do you have any recommendations about what to do on Nos Astra? Our trading center is directly ahead. You'll find restaurants and shops nearby as well. I suggest you browse our shopping kiosks. You can find things on Nos Astra that you can't find anywhere else in the galaxy. I went and spent so much money on the Citadel. Moments before showing up here. I spent so much money before coming here. I didn't know this was going to be a like it'll like an illegal shopping mall not illegal it's sorry loose with the rules you know i'm on a mission can you help me find someone i can help you find major entertainment centers or stores but i'm afraid i can't point you to individual people liara is excellent at that type of work however i imagine she can help you <sighs> all right i get it <laughs> thank you again welcome to our city commander please enjoy your stay What a time. Records indicated just a car named Samara is visiting this port, Shepard. Your former teammate, Liara Tassoni, may have more information. Her office overlooks the trading floor. You may wish to speak with her regarding the whereabouts of Thane Krios, the assassin on your dossier, as well. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so, so, okay. So we can talk to Liara. We just don't bring up the Shadow Broker thing. Because that's gonna kind of throw... I, I imagine even even if it is fine, it's gonna throw off like our flow right now, which is getting our our people. So let's go walk around because this is we got a whole city to see. All right, how? What a fucking move. What a power move. The Batarians out here. Look, slavery's part of our culture. Okay? Listen. Listen. Come here. Slaves are part of who we are. And by telling us we can't have them, you're actually infringing on our 
cultural right. And I think that's fucked up. That's actually terrible that you were suppressing our culture by telling us we can't have what we have. Everywhere else. We could talk to Karis. We could look over the city together. We were always told that Ilium is one of the safest places in the galaxy until you fell off the grid. Sign the wrong contract, join up with the wrong company, or walk down the wrong alley, and it's as dangerous as anywhere else. Don't let this place fool you. It's no safer here than Omega. <laughs> Damn. Alright, so it's just like pretty Omega. Look at that, that's crazy. Shit, dude. Fuck. I don't know why it gives me, it reminds me of like Coruscant. Except this place is like bad. Not bad, but you know, you, shady shit happens. The Turian hierarchy has announced that it will not limit its dreadnought production to previous totals. Citing an increased need for security in the wake of the deaths of previous council members, the Turian military intends to increase defense production. Representatives of the new human-led council had no comp. 25. Sell at 25. No, no, no. You're not hearing me. I want to buy it up. Buy it all up. Come on, come on. Give me something. Shit's popping. Very few Quarians ever set foot here. Ilium doesn't allow the flotilla to approach beyond a certain distance. This is the greatest planet in the galaxy for those who can afford it, and they work hard to keep the Quarian fleet away. It's kind of fucked up. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Commander Shepard? I, I am he who is that name. You're Commander Shepard? I saw your... I guess you would say your aura. I'd recognize you anywhere. It's called Swang. I was asked to give you a message if I saw you. It's from a friend you made on Novaria. Who? Who is it? I met a lot of people on Novaria. Could you be more specific? I believe the message itself should make it clear. Shepard, we hide. We borrow. We build. But we know that you seek those who soured the songs of our mothers. When the time comes... Our voice will join with yours, and our crescendo will burn the darkness clean. Thank you, Shepard. The Rachni will sing again because of you. Holy shit. Is that a good thing? That feels like a good thing. Holy fuck, <laughs> seriously? Holy shit. Wow. We let her, we let her go in the last, in the, in, in, in Mass Effect 1. And, holy shit, she actually reached out to us again. Through this, uh, sorry, but stop controlling her. Uh, is it really, I mean, she didn't, it doesn't seem that hostile. Seems okay. I don't know. She kind of agreed to it. She's like, I got a message. Uh, stop controlling her. Are you on Ilium? I'm glad to hear that you're rebuilding. Are you somewhere close by? The Rachni Queen is not here. That message is one of many memories I carry from her. I encountered her on an uncharted world. She saved my life. More than that, she gave me a purpose. They are an amazing people, Shepard. The galaxy owes you a great debt for giving them a second chance. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. That's so crazy. I never would have... There, there's so many things that are coming up that I thought were just going to be... Just kind of like neat little things that happened in one and then just like not really talked about again. And the, this is this is a whole thing. Damn. Rachni encounter Sari's purpose, the location, meaning of the message. It's like, our voice will join yours. So like, as an ally... How did you find the Rachni? I was working as a courier. Pirates ambushed my ship, and I was forced down on an uncharted planet. I was badly injured, alone and near death. Then they found me. They saved me. That's wild. 
You obviously got off world again. Did the Rachni give you a ship? No. Countless workers repaired my ship. It runs better now than it did before. They remind me of the keepers on the Citadel in a way, all working together, each with a purpose. <laughs> That's crazy. Holy shit. Wow. What happened to the pirates who attacked you? They were obliterated, as they should have been. The Rachni are not aggressive, but they do what they must. They do what needs to get done. That's so easy. They're not aggressive, but they do what they must. So, like, all... Like, obviously, right, the whole, the whole Rachni situation that happened way, way, way back when, right? These aren't giving that same energy, right? And I just kind of want to live and exist. You know, they're not trying to, like, take over and do all this shit. Hmm. You said the queen gave you a purpose. What do you mean? The queen shared her song with me as I recovered. I saw the Rachni as only an Asari could. They are so beautiful and so vulnerable. They needed someone to purchase things they cannot make themselves. Someone to work within the system. An agent, if you will. I am happy to help. My life as a courier was empty and shallow. Now I'm helping a great race rebuild itself. Yeah, like a fancier courier, right? But that is fascinating. So, so she talked with the queen and then she's basically like she needs somebody that can go out there and go shopping, right? And go like get things and do stuff and be involved with society, you know, when they can't. And it's interesting. She's happy to help, but is she genuinely happy? That's interesting. What a, what a happy occurrence, I guess, for her. Good for her. Sounds too easy, though. You were really comfortable walking away from your old life? You're concerned that the Queen is controlling me. I understand, but it doesn't work like that. Our minds were in perfect harmony. I saw their beautiful spirit and their need. I knew what I had to do. If some part of that is suggestion, then it was a side effect from their efforts to save my life. I am happy. Some part of that is suggestion, then it's a side effect from their efforts to save my life. I mean, if you're... If you're happy, I guess that's all that matters. Can you tell me where the Rachni are? I'm afraid not. I don't even have that information myself any longer. After I met the Rachni Queen, that information was removed. It's not painful, but I simply don't remember. I'll remember when I need to. Oh. And her caution is understandable. The galaxy isn't yet ready for the return of the Rachni. It is not. It is not. That shit is too fresh. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I get it. I respect it, right? But she just wants to exist. It's not about, at least the way I'm taking it, right? It's not about, you know, being secret as far as like hiding and like, you know, like it's protection, right? For themselves. The, nobody knows where they are. It's for their own survival, right? I get it. I got that she was grateful. What else was her message saying? That the first Rachni war was a mistake. Something soured the voices of her people. In Rachni psychology, that would be like mind control, I think. It doesn't really translate. Anyway, she believes you are fighting the ones who did that, and she promises to help. No way. Wait, are you saying? Are you saying that the, the, the Rachni were just like normal, they're chilling, they're doing their own thing, and then the Reapers came in and used indoctrination and made the Rachni do what they did? They made the Rachni do the thing because they didn't have to directly do it. The Reapers were just the puppet masters. And it like threw all this... That is a wild thing. 
If that's actually true, that's nuts. <laughs> so then all of the... So then... Everything everybody knows about the Rachni is artificial then. Like, like the way that everyone... The fear of the Rachni is purely... It's orchestrated from behind the scenes. She thinks that the Reapers caused the Rachni war? I can't say for sure, but she was certain that her ancestors were forced into war against their will. Her people aren't naturally aggressive. If they made war, it was not of their own doing. That's crazy. That's insane. Shit. Is there... Was there other options? I got that you the first rack in rack Anyway, she believes you are fighting the ones who did that and she promises to help. Okay. Thank you for giving me that information. I'm glad my friend in Avaria is doing well. Be well, Commander <laughs> Shepard. You will not see me again. Aw. It's kind of sad, but... That is, like, one of the coolest fucking things that has happened in this game so far. Among many, right? But that was really cool. <laughs> that was really cool. Holy shit. So not only... There's a chance that the Rachni wars were literally started by the reaper by the reapers right they did it that's nuts that's huge that's crazy because that that was like a domino effect that like threw everything off because that's what basically um because the Rachni War is the only thing that could stop the Rachni, like, realistically, they is when they put out all the Krogan to go win that. Which then eventually led to the Krogan Rebellion, which led to the Genophage. Which now ends up, essentially, long-term to where we are now. That's insane. That's crazy. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy crap, Shepard! I thought you were dead. No fucking way. Shepard? The news said you were dead. What happened? No, wait, probably classified. Forget I asked. You just have to lie. It's been a couple of years. I'm Gianna Parasini, Novaria Internal Affairs. You helped me nail Administrator Analeas. Goddamn right we did. We fucking put him into the... I was gonna say into the ground, but no, we put him into, hopefully, prison. It was my pleasure. Happy to help. What happened to Administrator Analeas? He made the one mistake Novaria won't tolerate. He got caught taking their money. He's doing a few years in white-collar prison. More importantly, he won't work in the field again. Sit down. If I remember right, I owe you a beer. Hey. <laughs> yeah, meet all these Novarian to people today. You know, that you can talk about. Cool. It's classified. I'm on a mission. Hitting the Collectors. You ever heard of the Collectors? They're attacking human colonies. I'm gonna stop them. Damn, Shepard. For me, a tough job involves more paperwork. What's that? Hey, listen, I just remembered something. I've got to go. Talk to you later. And um, don't forget to drink your beer. Oh, she left something. There's a note. Gianna, oh, yeah, it says right up there, Gianna's note. Ooh. Shepard had to leave. Target saw me. Couldn't break cover. A sorry merchant smuggling schematics from Novaria. Can you talk her into showing you good stuff? There's shit happening. The fact that Novaria came back into play even slightly and now has happened twice in a row, and now there's this? It's fucking cool. Oh my god. Sorry, merchant smuggling schematics from Novaria. So she was sent to fucking bring this person down. Stocks? Is that, is that like a big thing here? Because that's what seemed like they were doing. These are all pricing, selling, buying, selling, all that shit. Oh, this is going to be interesting. 
Okay, we're picking this up in the next episode. So thank you very so much for watching. I ran out of time for this one, but I wanted to make sure that we got some foot in the door in Ilium, and it is more than I thought it would be. And this is awesome. <laughs> this is cool. I know we had a lot to do here, but now we've gotten even more, and this is so... This is so cool. This is so cool. So I'm super... I'm fucking hyped for the next one. Let's go. Seriously, thank you guys for watching. As always. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. The Rachni thing is wild. That actually blows my mind a little bit. Uh, not a little bit, a lot. Like, not the, not just the fact that we talked to the Queen again, right? But the fact that that might have been... The Rachni Wars might have been orchestrated by the Reapers. And then... Um... And, and the implications of that, and the fact that the Queen's rebuilding, and... It's just, it's... It's cool. It's cool, and then we're gonna go talk to... We're gonna go talk to Liara eventually. That's gonna be... Something. I can't... She knows we're here, though. She paid our fees... To land. So it's like... Maybe she's not mad at us. Maybe she's cool. Still... Hopefully she didn't get married. We'll see. So thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.